So are you struggling with the subjectivity of what is sustainable packaging versus what is not? This is something that I think a lot of people are dealing with right now as sustainable packaging. We move closer to this world where sustainable packaging is the norm, which is our mission. And I've been thinking more and more about it, how there is a level of subjectivity, but wouldn't it be great if there was a way that anyone, whether it's a brand, whether it's a consumer, just all of us who are passionate about sustainable packaging, that we could evaluate whether or not something's actually sustainable. So I took a crack at it this morning or this afternoon, and I want to present this to you, some ideas on a rating system for sustainable packaging. And I would love for you to give it a try with a package that you're considering. See if it helps. See if it's beneficial. And definitely feel free to give feedback. I want to start this conversation. This is something that I want to exist in the world, so I'm putting it out there. And I don't claim to have all the answers. I know there will be ways that I can improve this. So if you have improvements to this platform or this framework or this system, I'm calling it a framework on how to rate sustainable packaging, let me know. Okay? Drop it in the comments, or you can email me, Mike M, M-I-K-E-M, at ContemporalPackaging.com. That's my email. All right, so I'm going to read this off. Um, I got a little text here. And I'm going to read this off, and uh, and here we go. So sub uh, sustainability is largely subjective. This would be under how to score or rate the sustainable packaging. Sustainability is largely subjective. What is sustainable to one person may not be sustainable to another. There are many lenses at which you can look at sustainability, which we've talked about a lot on the podcast. But the question remains, how can we create or can we create an objective way to evaluate whether or not something is sustainable? I think this is a big question, not just in packaging, but in the whole world as uh, environmentalism becomes more and more important or more and more the, the spotlights on it. As a packaging company, we're tackling this question as customers are asking us to help them become more environmentally sustainable. We take this very seriously. And while sustainability is largely subjective, we wanted to put down some guidelines in writing that anyone can use to determine the sustainability of their packaging. I want to induce, introduce what we can call a sustainability store, score or a contempo score or something of the likes. We'll determine that later, but that's not important right now. This can either be a self-assessment or done by a member of our team or a sustainability expert that you choose. So each of the following three questions get a score on a 1 to 10 scale. So there's three main questions, 1 to 10 scale, and then you're going to add it up. The first question, at the beginning of life, defined as where all the raw materials come from to manufacture the packaging. What are the positive and negative environmental effects? So you've chosen this package. Evaluate. What are the positive environmental effects at the beginning of life? And what are the negative environmental uh, effects at the beginning of life? And then rate it 1 to 10. That's the first question. Question 2. At the end of life, defined as what will happen to the packaging. What will happen to the packaging when the consumer is done with it? What are the positive and negative environmental effects. And based on that answer, you're going to, again, rate it on a 1 to 10 scale. So we're looking at the beginning of life, where it comes from, the end of life, where it goes, and we're going to evaluate the negative, the positive and negative environmental impacts and effects. And you might want to brainstorm that. Think about that. Uh, whiteboard that with your team. Really get in deep. If you really care about this stuff, you want to think about what's the consequence, what's the effect Cause and effect, right? The, whatever that famous law is of ther thermodynamics, or maybe I'm botching that, but the cause is you've chosen this sustainable package. What's the effect? Think about it. And the third part is how effectively does the packaging reduce the amount of raw material required? And rate that on a 1 to 10 scale. So do you have a little product like this and the box is like this? Little product with the giant box for those who are not watching on video. Or have you been mindful about the amount of raw material you're using. So you're going to give a 1 to 10 rating on each of those, and you have a score out of 30. And then we're also going to give three, up to three bonus points for the following question. You get one to three bonus points. Is your packaging manufactured with renewable energy, and is your packaging manufactured in close proximity to where the product is being manufactured? I've talked to uh, the main life cycle assessment company that we use. Allocates about 10% to that. So 10% on 30, another three points. So any score over 21, we're going to consider sustainable as far as this rating. So if you get a 7 and a 7 and a 7 out of 10 three times on average, you're in sustainability. Now, this is somewhat of a, um, you could say we just chose this, but I really think the thinking behind it is sound. And 
whether something's a 20 or an 18 or a 24, there's a lot of subjectivity. But if something's a three versus something's in the mid or high 20s, you're going to get a better sense of whether or not there's a sustainable element to this. You can also, I put this down too, you can also get bonus points if your packaging is a measurable improvement to the status quo, even if it doesn't reach the 21 points. So as an example, you see in the world today toothpaste tubes that are now recyclable. In the past, those tubes were made with multiple layers and they were not recyclable. They might still be made from virgin plastic. Many of you will not like that. They're still made from virgin plastic in many cases, but now that tube is recyclable. That's a measurable improvement to the status quo. So I would also be willing to give bonus points or we need some sort of accommodation for those cases where uh, there's not a perfect option, there's not a phenomenal option, but it's better and we need to celebrate progress. That's one of our values. Okay, these are not hard and fast rules, but rather is a strong starting point on how you can think about sustainability if you're struggling with the subjectivity, okay? So give the rating a try. Let me know what you think. See, you know, grab a product that's in your, uh, you know, in your, in your home or when you're shopping in the stores and think about these three questions. Give a rating on a uh, 1 to 10 scale and see where they land. So I'll say them one more time. At the beginning of life, what are the positive and negative environmental effects? That's 10 points. At the end of life, what are the positive and negative effects environmentally? That's 10 points. And the third question is how effectively does the packaging reduce the amount of raw material required? I hope you like it. I hope it brings some clarity. And thanks as always for watching the Sustainable Packaging Show. Let me know what you think in the comments below.